Welcome to Pixtope Academy. In today's video, we'll be discussing how to use the internal keyer of Pixtope. Under the production view, you'll navigate to the video keyer tab. Here, you'll need to select enable video keyer under initiate. Once this checkbox has been activated, you'll be able to select the initialize key button. This will open up a new window for initializing your key. Here, you can use the drawing tool and select for the foreground and background in order to identify the colors to be keyed. With the background button already selected, we can begin to draw around our talent and select all the different shades of green that we want to sample for the key. And by selecting Send Key to Output, we'll be able to see the alpha of our image in the editor or live view. This can help us to identify any holes in the background or foreground of our keyed image. And then we're going to select the Initialize Key button. And now we're able to see a real-time update in our alpha. And now we can go ahead and close this window to return to our refinement panel. Back in the main window, you can see we also have a checkbox for Send Key to Video Output here under Preview, as well as a drop-down menu for keyer models. We'll be working with our latest release, the Chroma PX2 model, but here you could also select the PX1 Legacy model if desired. And underneath our drop-down menu, you'll see the Automatic Clean Plate Generation checkbox. When selected, this will affect the Luma values being applied to the Add Luma key and Add Shadow slider. All right, now let's go ahead and begin refining our key. It looks like we have our talent complete in the foreground, but the first step would be to use the Add Luma key if there were any values we needed to push up to make the foreground solid. Now to get rid of the noise below our talent, we're gonna use the Adjust Background slider. The goal being to get the background to be a solid black so that the image can composite seamlessly over the virtual background. Now, in order to counteract any fine details or edges that we might lose with the Adjust Background slider, we're now going to use the Adjust Foreground slider to bring those back. While these three tools are going to be your primary means for refining your key, we also have an array of tools available for secondary refinement. Let's reset the sliders and go through each of these now. At the very top, we have Adjust Key Color Intensity. Here you can adjust the Strength slider, Below that, under Mask Adjustments, we have the Gamma Slider. Adjusting the Gamma control tunes the grayscale on the alpha itself. Gamma doesn't affect the maximum brightness or darkness. These values will stay the same. It's a power function affecting only the intermediate values. This affects everything in between through a curve, tuning the contrast. Adjusting Gamma lower pushes middle gray to a higher level, lifting the dark values. Adjusting gamma higher pushes these values the other way, moving middle gray lower and adjusting the shadows and highlights correspondingly. Next, we have the gain slider. By adjusting the slider up on gain, you're pushing the gray values to blow out white. Anything that is not black will be affected by this in the foreground. Next, we have the erode slider. This is a morphological operation which erodes the boundary of the foreground, making it smaller. By increasing the erode slider, we can eat away at hard black outlines that may be around our talent. This tool really should be used as a last resort, as too much can easily erode fine details such as hair and even fingers. The detail enhancement slider affects the strength of the effect. Increasing the level will help to include more details in the soft edges. Under the shadows options, we have the add shadow slider. This allows you to bring back shadows from the keyed area. A value of zero gives no shadows, while a subtle value will give you believable soft shadows. Below that, the Adjust Contrast slider adjusts the depth of the shadows generated. Next, we have the Despill controls. These allow you to vary the removal of the background color, which is spilled into the foreground. Luma. This controls the Luma value in the despilled area. This blends back the original luminance value of the edge pixels rather than using the luminance of the background pixels to improve blending the edges between the foreground and the composited background. Chroma controls the strength of the spill removal. Reducing this value allows you to see if any other colors are being despilled. And if you see other colors being despilled, you can use the cutoff control to correct that. Cutoff controls the range of colors that are despilled from the original background picked color. 
Adjusting the cutoff can reduce the despell effect for those pixels and preserve the original foreground colors. Hue changes the angle of the hue for the range of despilled colors. Generally, you'll find better use of the cutoff control than hue in order to preserve the original foreground colors. Respill can improve the visual integration of the keyed object into the scene. When enabled, this will sample the colors from the scene and apply them to the edge of the keyed object. While best results will typically come from colors automatically selected from the scene, you can also select a custom color for the respill which will best match the scene and then use the respill slider to adjust the strength of the color being applied. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please see our help center for more great resources to get the most out of your next production with Pixtope.